Well, hello, and welcome to my Kubota L3301 and L3901 100-hour maintenance video. Now, if you happen to own an L2501, don't worry. Almost all of these tasks still apply to your attractor. In fact, the main difference is you don't have a diesel particulate filter to worry about. In this video, I'll take you through each maintenance task step by step. But more than that, I'll show you some of the issues you may run into that your tractor manual does not cover. Also, I'll tell you what tools and supplies you'll need to have on hand for each task. In fact, there's a complete list of tools and supplies available for download from the DIY My Way website. You'll find a link to that page in the video description. When doing maintenance on your tractor, you will need full access to all areas of the tractor. So if you have a front-end loader, you should remove it. Also, remove any implement you might have on the three-point. I also remove the three-point hardware. If you're changing engine or hydraulic oil, it's important to let the engine warm up for about 10 minutes before starting maintenance, especially in cold weather. The warm fluids drain quicker and more completely. Of course, you'll want your tractor's operator manual handy, but if you can, I recommend you make a copy of the maintenance checklist pages and have them on a clipboard for easy reference. I also made copies of the pages with all the procedures so as not to mess up the original manual with grease and dirt. You'll want to have some paper towels or shop rags on hand, and some nitro gloves are nice to have for the ickier tasks. Oh, and about that checklist. Unfortunately, the maintenance tasks aren't in the same order as they are in the manual. However, they do have a column showing the page number in the manual. Note that the tasks that must be done after the first 50 hours are marked by a double circle. And any special notes show up here and are listed on the last page of the list. Also, if you want to find a specific task in the video, you'll find an index in the description to the time when the task starts. Now let's get to it. Okay, first test the engine start system. There are no tools needed for this. Sitting on the tractor, place all control levers in the neutral position. Set the parking brake. Depress the speed control pedal in the desired direction. Fully depress the clutch pedal. Make sure the PTO lever is disengaged. Turn the key to the start position. Hopefully, nothing happens. To test PTO safety, engage the PTO lever. Fully depress the clutch pedal. Put the speed control in neutral. Turn the key to the start position. Again, hopefully nothing happens. Silence is golden. For the final PTO test, start the tractor. Fully depress the clutch pedal. Engage the PTO lever. Then stand up from the seat. The engine should shut off after about one second. If your tractor passes these tests, you can check that off the list. If not, you should contact your dealer to arrange for service. Next, check wheel bolt torque. You will need a torque wrench that goes up to at least 160 pounds a socket extension shaft, and 22 and 24 millimeter sockets. The front wheels are tightened to 100 foot-pounds using a 22 millimeter socket. The rear wheels are tightened to 160 foot-pounds using a 24 millimeter socket. This is where you'll need an extension shaft to reach the lugs on the rear wheels. Of course, repeat for the wheels on the other side. Next, lubricate the grease fittings. You'll need a grease gun and a rag or paper towel. Use a high-quality multi-purpose grease, NLGI-2 or NLGI-1. For four-wheel drive tractors, start with the tie rod grease fittings. First, wipe off the fittings with a cloth or paper towel to remove any dirt.
a couple of squirts of grease will do. For two-wheel drive tractors, apply grease to the knuckle shafts. Apply grease to the front and rear axle support until you see grease flowing out of the breather port opposite the grease fitting. There are three fittings on the pedal shaft. Finally, grease your three-point top link and side link. Next, check the condition of the battery. It helps to have a flashlight for this. Release the grill guard and open the hood. Use a flashlight or the light on your phone to observe the battery indicator. Green means the battery is in good condition like you see here. Black means the battery needs charging. White means the battery needs to be replaced. To check the fan belt tension, you will need a 12 mm wrench and a 14 mm wrench. With the engine stopped, apply moderate pressure to the belt between the pulleys. The belt should deflect between 0.28 and 0.35 inches. In my case, it's close to half an inch, so I have to tighten the belt. Remove the side panel using a 12 mm wrench. Loosen the top bolt on the alternator, which also requires a 12 mm wrench. Loosen the bottom alternator bolt with a 14 mm wrench. While pulling the alternator toward you with your right hand, check the tension on the belt with your left. You might find it helpful to use a tool as a lever for pulling on the alternator. Once the deflection is within the specified range, tighten the alternator bolts. To adjust the brake pedal, you'll need a 17mm wrench, some adjustable pliers, and a tape measure. Release the parking brake and lightly press the brake pedal until you feel resistance. Measure the amount of travel. The acceptable range of free travel is 0.6 to 0.8 inches. Mine is measuring about 1.5 inches, so I definitely need to adjust the brakes. First, release the brake interlock between the pedals. Starting on the left side, loosen the lock nut so that you can turn the rod to shorten the length. Then check the travel of the left pedal. If it's in range, grip the rod with pliers and tighten the lock nut. If it's not in range, shorten the rod further until it is. Repeat the process for the right brake until it is in the acceptable range.
Next, adjust the clutch pedal. You'll need a 17 mm wrench, some adjustable pliers, and a tape measure. Lightly press the clutch pedal until you feel resistance. Measure the amount of travel. The acceptable range of free travel is 0.8 inches to 1.2 inches. Mine is measuring 1 inch, so I don't need to adjust the clutch. However, if you do, the procedure is basically the same as for the brakes, but the clutch rod is a little harder to get to. Loosen the lock nut so that you can turn the rod to adjust the length. Then check the travel of the clutch pedal. Once it's in range, grip the rod with pliers and tighten the lock nut. To clean the air element, you will need an air compressor and a blow gun. Remove the cover by releasing the two latches on either side, then pull the cover straight toward you. Remove the air element by gently pulling it toward you. Set the compressor to not more than 30 PSI. Take the air element outdoors and spray the element from inside, then the outside, then the inside again. Keep this up until you no longer see dust and dirt clouds coming off the element. Once the element is clean, reinstall it. The manual doesn't say this, but I like to wipe the ends of the element off with a paper towel before reinstalling it. Now reinstall the cover. By the way, this is called the evacuator port. Kubota recommends that under ordinary conditions you open the valve once a week to get rid of large particles of dust and dirt. If your tractor is always operating in a dusty environment, open the valve daily. You don't have to remove the cover to do this, just pinch it from the sides to open the valve. Hey there, how you doing? Be sure the cover is fully seated and that both latches are closed. While the hood is up and you have your compressor handy, now is a great time to clean the radiator screen. From either side of the tractor, pull up on the fixed spring and slightly lift the edge of the screen before pulling it out. Yep, that could use a cleaning. Use the air compressor with the blowgun to blast away that pesky dirt. Then reinstall the screen. To check the fuel line, have a rag or paper towel handy. These are the lines that need to be inspected every 100 hours. However, at least on my tractor, this isn't as simple as it seems because they are all protected with flexible plastic hose protectors. With the exception of this split protector here, they were solid so I could not peel them back to get a look at the actual fuel lines. While I'm at it, I'll wipe off the fuel overflow tube. Then I'll wipe off each section of the fuel line so I can spot any signs of damage, leaking, tooth decay, or gum disease. Since I can zip the protector off this section, I can actually get a look at the hose after wiping it off. Looks fine, so the hose protector goes back on.
Notice that it isn't even long enough. I might just replace the hose protector with a longer piece. If your tractor happens to have more split hose protectors, you can give more fuel lines thorough inspection. To inspect the fuel grommet, it is easier if you have a telescoping inspection mirror and a flashlight. That right there is the fuel grommet. Look for signs of cracking or leaking fuel. This one looks fine, but if yours doesn't, contact your dealer to arrange for service. Well, I hope you found this video useful in helping you maintain your tractor. Remember, maintaining your tractor according to your manual is the best way you're going to get the most life and trouble-free operation out of your tractor. And if you found this video helpful in any way, uh, please click the like button, uh, leave a comment, and by all means, subscribe. And if you want to know when I post a new video, click that little bell. And as always, thank you for watching.